Ephesians chapter 5, let's read from verse 21. It says, Submitting yourself one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourself, yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. He said, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husband in everything. Husband, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot and wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to, to love their wife as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. It is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. In this scripture, Christ is being depicted as the husband, and the church is being depicted as his wife. He said, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So Christ is the husband here, and the church is is the wife here in this scripture. And why did we, as we celebrate Mother's Day today, we, we ask mothers to come out and mothers to be. And they came out. Why did they come out? They came out because they have given birth to somebody or they are in the process of giving birth to somebody if there are younger girls in the church they probably won't come out why because they are not at that stage of giving birth yet they've not given birth and they are not about to give birth so even though they are females but they won't come out with the mothers So for you to be a mother, you must have given birth to somebody. And in this scripture, Christ is being presented as the husband and the church is being presented as the wife. And of course, you know it takes husband and wife to give birth in the physical. So also, the intention of God is that a relationship will ensue between you and Christ that will lead to giving birth to greatness, giving birth to something, giving birth to a purpose so that you can become a mother in the realm of the spirit and not a little girl or a little boy. When it comes to relationship between us and Jesus Christ, you know, gen gender is not an issue. Both men and women, we are both wives to Jesus. And there is need for an intimate relationship to ensue between us and Christ so that we can give birth. Just as in the physical, a, a, a couple that, does, that stays apart, a couple that does not live together, that doesn't have intimacy, will not likely be able to give birth. The same thing in the realm of the spirit. If we don't have intimacy with, with our God, if we don't have closeness, fellowship, relationship with Christ, we will not be able to give birth. 
The process of giving birth involves conception. It starts with intimacy and then it leads to conception. There, it is not the, 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 unless on some special occasion, it's not every intimacy in the physical that leads to conception. If that were to be the case, maybe this whole world will be more, will be more than 100 billion. <laughs> now, it is not every intimacy between man and woman that leads to conception. It takes continuous, repeated intimacy to conceive. There is a greatness that God is expecting you to give birth to. That's why he depicts our relationship with Christ as that between husband and wife. In life and in destiny, you will not be barren. Amen. I was thinking your amen would be louder than that. Amen. I said in life and in destiny, you will not be barren. In life and destiny, you will not be barren. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You see how worried in-laws become. When people are married, and after nine months, there is nothing. In-laws become worried. People become worried. Even pastors become worried. That is how heaven also worries over our lives. That is the same expectation you have as parents over your children when they get married. The same ex expectation our parents have over us when we get married, that's the same expectation heaven has over our life once we give our life to Christ. Once we become born again. Can you imagine how many years some of us have been knowing Christ and we have not brought forth? We have not brought forth anything in the realm of the seed, but people can see and say, this is our seed. This is our child. Again, I say that in the journey of destiny, you will not be barren. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It takes intimacy. The Bible says that Abraham knew his wife. Conception cannot take place without a knowing between you and Christ. Without an intimacy, without a relationship. You cannot know Christ from afar. And conceive for him. You cannot know him from distance. And conceive for him. It takes an intimate relationship. Usually you will see intimacy between husband and wife. It's not done publicly. It's done behind closed doors. In a secluded room. Usually, just two of them alone. For you to conceive in the realm of the spirit, it is not what happened in church service. It is not what happened in house fellowship. It is something that happens when you are alone with him. Behind closed doors. When nobody is watching. And it is you and him. And you stay with him until you know you have conceived. There is something that I'm carrying. And you see how a woman protects her baby when she's pregnant. A woman, everything about her is focused on 
the baby. Before he eats anything, he con she considers what impact it will have on the baby. Before she drinks anything, she considers what impact it will have on the baby. When anything is going wrong around her, anything, anything, something is falling, and where she's protect, protecting is her tummy. So that nothing will, will hit her tummy. When you conceive something, you become protective on, of it. Your, all your attention is on what you are carrying. The moment Joseph conceived that dream, every other thing does not matter to him again. Whatever is going on, whatever he's going through, he doesn't care as long as this pregnancy is preserved. A woman can do anything to preserve her pregnancy. I came today to express to you the yearning of heaven for your conception. The yearning of heaven to put greatness inside you. But God is asking for your intimacy. Is asking for your time. Is asking for your privacy. So that there can be an intimacy that will lead to conception. Because there is greatness that heaven wants to give birth to. And your cooperation is needed. In Luke chapter 1, from verse 26. Let's look at Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Amen. He says, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. What was the name of that city? Nazareth. Take note of Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail thou that are highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled and his, and, uh, at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son. And shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great. You will conceive and bring forth. And what you bring forth shall be called Jesus. And for your information, he shall be great. Hail, thou that are highly favored. Hail, thou that are highly favored. I'm speaking to you. I'm not reading the scripture anymore. Hail, thou that are highly favored. You will conceive. Amen. And you will bring forth a son. And he shall be great. I say he shall be great. Amen. I say he shall be great. Amen. I say he shall be great. Amen. I want you to receive this word as a prophetic word for your life. I come to you this morning to say to you that you will conceive, you will bring forth, and what you will bring forth shall be great. It shall be great. Amen. I'm not talking of physical or biological conception now. I'm talking of spiritual conception. 
And as many of you that will see what God is saying and hear what God is saying with your spirit man, there shall be performance. In the name of Jesus. He said, in the city of Nazareth, let's look at John chapter 1 verse 46. John chapter 1 and verse 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Maybe even you don't even believe that anything good can come out of you. Maybe people have concluded that nothing good, not even nothing great now, is it can anything good come out of Nazareth? But the angel said, what is coming out of Nazareth will not only be good, but it will be great. If there are situations in your life that appears as if nothing good can come out of it, your children is as if nothing good can come out of them. Your destiny is as if nothing good can come out of it. Your marriage, it appears as if nothing good can come out of it. Hail, thou that are highly favored, you will conceive and you will bring forth. And that which is coming out of you shall be great. I see greatness coming out of your life. You may look small today. You may look like Nazareth today. Your family might have concluded that nothing good can come out of you. But I see great, great things. Great, great things coming out of you. You know the man of gathering. The Bible says that no one could bind him. He was no longer living among human beings. And he was cutting himself with stones and bodies. But there was greatness locked inside him. And the day he met Jesus, there was a conception. There was a delivery. And something great came out of him. I see mothers of greatness. You will deliver your greatness. I say you will deliver your greatness. You will deliver your greatness. He said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But look at what Ezekiel chapter 12 verse 23 says. Ezekiel chapter 12 and verse 23. He said, tell them therefore, thus said the Lord God, I will make this proverb to cease and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel. This proverb that can anything good come out of Nazareth. That proverb was made to cease when Jesus came out of Nazareth. Nobody ever used that proverb anymore. The proverb that does not glorify God that is being used over your life, God will cause it to cease. God will cause it to cease. Do you know that as an individual, there are certain proverbs that is being used over our lives, either spoken or unspoken. 
as a church, there are proverbs that is being used, either spoken or unspoken. Even though we call ourselves International Church, Jubilee Christian Church International, but you know that there's a proverb over our church. It's, it's, if you don't want to paint it good, they say it's an African church. When they want to say it the way it is, they say it's a Nigerian church. Then when they want to drag it in the flock, real, real, they say it's a Yoruba church. <laughs> that proverb will cease. I said that proverb will cease. When you come into church, you see Americans, black, white. You see Hispanics. You see the Indians. You see the Chinese. And then you don't know what to call the church. And then you say it's an international church. I said that wrong proverb will cease. As it is for as I just illustrated to you about the church, that is how it is about individual lives. That's how it is about individual lives. There are certain things they talk that they will be talking about, and your name is mentioned, they say, forget it. It's not like we are not talking about, you know, not somebody like him. Do you know that when they were talking about anointing somebody for a king, David's family say, not like him. They presented every other person. They said, but not somebody like him. But that proverb, proverb was made to cease. That proverb over your life, this day, it will cease. Amen. Because there will be a conception and there will be a delivery. Amen. Where they said nothing good can come, something great is coming. Amen. Where they said nothing good can come, which means they did not even expect greatness. They did not even expect greatness there. They say even good cannot come there, cannot come out of there. Whereas the plan of God is for greatness to come out of it. And in this service today, there shall be a conception. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As a people, there are proverbs over our lives. Once they say it's black, there are certain things they say forget it. They say forget it. When they talk of the black man, forget it. An African, forget it. African American, no, forget it. There are these proverbs over our lives. But it's about to cease. I say it is about to cease. Yeah. What proverb it is that is in your family? When they mention your family name, they say, no, it's not possible. In fact, when they ask, what is, what is the name that this baby is going to bear? And they wrote John. They say, no. There's nobody in, the, in this lineage that bears such names. It is wrong. Then God opened the mouth of the father. He said, maybe nobody has, you know, bought that name before. But now, this is the new name. The one that will be greatest among the prophets of the Old Testament is now coming out of our family. Mothers. Of, come on, say, I am a mother. Of greatness. Say it one more time. I am a mother of greatness. Say it one more time. I am a mother of greatness. Even Mary herself did not believe. She said, How can this be? Let's go back to Luke. Let's go back to Luke chapter 1. How can this be. And the angel said to, to her, he said, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Yes. 
Verse 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be? Maybe you are saying to, to me in your heart this morning, How shall that be? Because you are calculating. You are looking at the situation and the circumstances. You know I'm a virgin. How can this be? Pastor, you know I don't have a job. How can greatness come out of me? You know I don't have my papers. How can greatness come out of me? You know I, I can't even pay my bills. So how can that greatness come? You know I'm not ordained, Pastor. How can that greatness come? But hear me. The angel said to Mary, he said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. And therefore also, that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. The son of God. So pastor, are you just making yourself happy? How do you think house of glory will have members from all nations? Why are you wasting your time? Why not just live with the few Nigerians you have and just manage them with the other Africans that join them and the two or three Americans that are with you? Why not just move on with that? How possible? You've been doing this for the past 13 years. How can it be possible? The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. I said the Holy Ghost. When he comes upon the church and overshadow the church, then that which looks impossible will begin to happen. It does not matter what your situation looks like now. If you will believe. When the explanation was given, Mary said, mm, let it be unto me according to your word. How many of you will say, let it be, Pastor? Unto me this day, according to your word. I say to you again, you will give back to greatness. Yeah. I say to you again, you will give back to greatness. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. There is a scripture in Luke 11, verse 27. Luke 11, verse 27. He said, and it came to pass as he spake these things. Now, let me read uh, verse 34 to you first. Luke 1, 34. He said, then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be? How shall this be? Luke eleven twenty seven. And it came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bear thee. The thing that Mary said, how shall it be? It came to be. It surely became great that even when Mary was not there, what her womb brought forth when people saw it, they were blessing the womb that brought it forth. What God will do, what God will bring forth through you, when your generation sees it, they will bless your womb. Amen. Have, you, have you encountered something and you get to a place where you say, ah, whoever God is used to do this, God bless the person. Whoever God has used, 
a situation where people see what came out of you before they even see you. When you have not brought forth, that is when you will be telling people who you are. But when you have really brought forth, people will know what you brought forth before they even know you. And when they see you eventually, they will be blessed they see you. But when introduction is long, they are just trying to make up. <laughs> you know, he was this, he was this, he was this, he was this, he was this. They are still trying to make up for you. Amen? Amen? There are certain people that when they walk into this service this morning, they don't need introduction. Every one of you will know this is the person. This is this person. For instance, if Obama walks in here, nobody needs to introduce you. You will know who he is. And I know so many of us say, if Creflo Dollar walks into this church this morning, you will know that this is Creflo. Amen? But when you walk into a place and nobody knows you, you need prayer this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so when I say let's pray, <laughs> so then let us pray. Amen? Amen? When I say let's pray, then we, we, we really need to pray. 